What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we've got a nice easy lesson. We're looking at how to add three digits to a one digit number which does not involve bridging. Let's jump into it. Okay, so today we're going to look at these two questions. We have 452 add 5 and 463 add 6. And we're going to follow these steps. Our first step says that we're going to use column labels. We're going to see what that means in a minute. And step two says start with our smallest value. So let's begin and let's think about what this first sentence means. Use column labels. Well, when we're putting these questions into columns, we need to make sure that we put the numbers in the right column. And the way we're going to do that is by understanding the value of each number. So first, let's look at this 452. Well, 452, our 2 is in our 1s column. Our 5 is in our 10s column. And our 4 is in our 100s column. And we're adding it to a 5, which is only in the 1s column. Now, when I'm setting up my place value chart, I can put 100s, 10s, and 1s, because we have nothing bigger than 100 and nothing less than 1s. And now I'm going to start with the 452. And I can see that I have a 2 in the 1s column, so I need to put my 2 in the 1s column. I have a 5 in the 10s column, so I put the 5 in the 10s column. And a 4 in the 100s column, so I put the 4 in the 100s column. Now I can look at my 5, and I see that that's in the 1s column. So I'm going to put it here underneath the 2. Now this is where a lot of people could make a mistake, because we're so used to looking from left to right, that some people put the 5 all the way over here. And we know that's not right because that's saying that this 5 is now in the hundreds column representing 500, which it's not. It's only a 5. So let's put it back in the ones column. Now I can put my equals line for my answers, put my addition sign to make sure I remember that I'm adding, and I can begin. Now I can look at my second instruction. It says start with the smallest value. So where's the smallest value here? Well, our smallest value is our 1s. 1s are smaller than 10s and are smaller than 100s. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 to 5. Now if I don't know how to do that, I can use my number line. So I'm going to set up a number line just here. And I'm going to put 0 on this side. 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now when using my number line, I'm going to start with the top number. And my question was two add five. So I'm going to start on two, and I'm going to make five jumps. One, two, three, four, five, leaving me on seven. So two plus five equals seven. Now my next question, there's a five in the tens column and nothing in the next row. So I could put this little placeholder 0 here, and 5 add 0 is obviously 5. And same thing for the next one, my hundreds column, I have a 4 and nothing, so I could put the placeholder 0, 4 add 0 is of course 4. Therefore, my answer to 452 plus 5 equals 457. Let's look at this next one, and I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. So I have 463 plus 6. Well, my 463, I can see I have the 3 in the 1s, the 6 in the 10s, and the 4 in the 100s column. And then the 6 on its own over here would just be a 1. Therefore, now I can put my 100s, 10s, and 1s. And I can look at this first number, 463, and see I have 3 1s, 6 10s, and 4 100s. And my second number, the number 6 on its own, I have 6 1s. Put my equals line and my add sign. And again, start from my smallest value, which is my 1s column. And this time I'm not going to use a number line. I'm going to look at 3 add 6. And I'm going to do that on my fingers. 3 add 6 is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So I get an answer of 9. Now in the 10s column, I have this 6 add a 0, because there's nothing in the other row. 6 at 0 is of course 6, and again my hundreds column 4 at 0 leaves me with 4. So my answer to 463 plus 6 equals 400.
and 69. Easy! Let's look at what to remember. Always begin by putting the column labels. This is going to help you put the numbers in the correct place and not make any small mistakes. Then we're going to insert the numbers by putting the smallest value in line first. And then we're going to begin adding from the smallest value. Okay, your turn. Have a go at working out these two questions. Find a piece of paper, sit and take your time, and put your answers in the comment section. I'm going to try and mark them all. Press pause on the video now. Good luck. What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're looking at how to subtract a one digit number away from a three digit number that does not involve borrowing. Let's begin. Okay guys, so today we're going to be looking at subtraction. So let's look at our two steps we're going to use. First, we're going to remember to use column labels. This is really important to help us not put things in the wrong place. And then secondly, we're going to start from the smallest value. And we're going to see what that means properly in a moment. So what method are we going to use? Well, we're going to use what's called the column method. And this might be the first time you've seen the column method. And the column method means that we're going to put our numbers in columns. So before we start, let's label our numbers so we understand what place value they have. So that makes it easier to put them in the columns. So let's first of all look at 457. Well, 457 is made up of seven ones. So we can put this little O above the seven. Five tens and four hundreds. Hopefully you've seen a number shown like that before with our ones, tens and hundreds over the top. And then looking at our second number, our one digit number, our five is obviously in our ones column. So let's look back at our step one. Step one said use column labels. So before I put my numbers in the columns, I'm going to put my column labels, ones, tens and hundreds. And now that should make it a lot easier to make sure I put the numbers in the correct place. So I have 457 which we said had seven ones, so I'll put my seven in the ones column, five tens, and four hundreds. And then my second number, the five, only has a five in the ones column, and nothing in the tens or the hundreds. So I could actually put my zero here to show that there's nothing, and I'm putting it in this sort of dotted line because we're gonna call that a placeholder. It's not actually in our question, but it's a zero that should be there. But hold up a second, because this is where some people could have made a big mistake. I'm going to put my ones, tens, and hundreds over here to show you what some people might do. They're going to put their seven in the ones column, their five in the tens, and their four in the hundreds. But then when it comes to put this little five in the right place, they're going to think, oh, well, I'm used to seeing things from left to right. I'm going to put it over here. Uh-oh. What happens when we put our placeholder? That's right, we've turned that 5 into a 500 because we put it in the hundreds column. So we know that is incorrect. But a lot of people make that mistake because they don't put these titles above their columns. So now we're ready to begin and we can put our equals line and our subtraction sign so that we remember we're doing subtraction. Now we can look at step 2 which said start with our smallest value. And our smallest value is our ones. Ones are smaller than tens and are smaller than hundreds. So looking at my ones column, I have seven subtract five. So if I have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say I've got my seven counters and I subtract five, one, two, three, four, five. How many does that leave me? Well, I have one, two. So my answer is two. And then my second question would be now here in the tens column, and I have five subtract zero, and five subtract zero is still five. And my last question in the hundreds column says four subtract zero, and my answer would therefore be four. So my answer to 457 subtract five equals 452. Awesome. Okay, I just wanna show you something really important at this point. So let's look at our first question here, which we agreed was seven subtract five, and we thought it equaled two. Now, why did we start with the seven and put the five second? Well, that's because the seven is the number on top, so therefore we're taking five away from seven. So our question must be seven subtract five, 
because if we flipped it around and did 5 subtract 7, well, that gives us a totally different number to 2. It actually gives us negative 2. Yuck. So remember, the number on the top of our columns is the number we put first, and the number on the bottom of our columns is the number we're taking away, so we put it second. Okay, question two, 469 subtract six, and I'm gonna do this a little bit quicker, so I'm gonna put my ones, tens, and hundreds, put my number in place, I have nine ones, six tens, and four hundreds in the first number, and then a six ones in the second number. Put my equals line, and my subtraction sign, and I'm ready to begin. 6 subtract 9, I'm not going to draw my counters this time, I'm going to do it on my fingers, put 9 fingers up and take 6 down, leaves me with 3 fingers up, and now I have this 6 subtract what? Well that's right, I forgot to put my placeholders in place, let's put our little zeros here to show that there should be zeros there, so now I can do 6 subtract 0 is 6, 4 subtract 0 is 4, leaving me an answer of 463. Awesome. Your turn. Have a go answering these two questions. Get a piece of paper and a pencil. Practice a little bit and check your answers by putting them in the comment section and I'll give them a mark. Press pause on the video now. Good luck. And there you have it. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, share it with a friend, someone else you think would benefit from a video like this. But for now guys, thank you very much for watching. See you in another video. Peace out.